Okay, tonight is round two of the Dwarf 2, which is a, a new smart telescope that's coming out. It's going to be released sort of early part of 2023. Relatively affordable compared to the other offerings out there. Probably you can't expect the same performance out of it, but is it good to image the brighter deep sky objects out there? Let's find out. I've got the latest firmware installed now and uh, I've learnt my way around it over the last week that I've had it. Um, tonight I'm going to be using the magnetically clipped on filter attachment and this is the ultra high contrast filter on the telephoto lens. So basically all you do is pop it outside somewhere on a flat firm surface, point the lens up at the sky above any kind of obstacles and you come back in. Obviously you just need to make sure it's switched on as well with that button. Connect using the, the Dwarf Lab app here. There we go. So as you can see, look at my horrific Artex ceiling in the kitchen there. And we can just can move it around like so. You can see the lens moving there as I control it via this joypad on the screen. I didn't realise this last time I was out, but I was worried about these kind of showing up at star parties and stuff with this light in. And uh, what you can do is you can click on this dude here or lady, go to camera settings, and you can just turn these lights on and off like that. There you go, so both off, both on. Apparently you can change the colour somewhere as well. I'm not sure where that is, yo. Anyway, look at that another time. So inside here, I didn't mention what sensor it was before. It's using a Sony IMX415 sensor, which has got really fine 1.45 micron pixels. So finer than a lot of the other um, sensors out there, which means that they can miniaturize the optics and get it this small. I mean, it's not very wide, is it? So it's got a prism there that kind of sends the light down. It's some lenses that focus and a wide angle lens in front of it there. <clears throat> and it moves on a altazimuth axis. And basically if we go and pop it outside now, I'll point the lens up at the sky and we'll come in and we'll do focus and plate solving from this app where it just finds its way around the sky and learns where it is. And then we can go to objects. So now we're looking for the Wi-Fi signal from the Dwarf 2 and we'll connect up to the that and see if we can get focus first of all. Okay, so first of all I'm going to put my IR pass on so that removes the IR cut filter, it's going to make it a little bit more sensitive. Right, let's try and help ourselves here by putting the gain up to 100. That's about with the exposure maybe. It did do it on all tape before, but I'm just slowing down the exposure now and seeing. It helps us a little bit. <coughs> oh, there we go. See stars now. So what I'm going to do is get them in the middle. Oop, come back. That's it. And I'm going to pinch in on it and just try and get as tight a focus as possible. That's defocusing. Let's defocus the other way. Okay. 
think maybe something like that. We'll go with that. Yeah, that seems reasonable focus. So next we want to do the plate solving. So click on, oh, I just want to be in astro mode for this actually, and then click on features, calibration. And what it's going to do now is it's going to take pitch, pictures of three parts of the sky. And it then examines the pattern of stars and then recognizes where it is, which is all rather clever. And this bit works really well. I think the, the next bits are a lot slicker. The focus, if you've not got something you can see visibly to focus on, there is a bit of hunting around I'm finding. But this is the first time I've used the updated firmware and already the buttons are a lot less sticky. And um, I'm, I don't remember having sort of haptic feedback before. I can actually get some kind of feedback on the buttons when I press them which is really good. And the auto focus doesn't stay on <clears throat> like it did before. So there we go, it's calibrated now. And if we go to go to now, we've got a library to search for an object to go to. I want to pick something fairly bright. I think we've all tried Andromeda now, so I'm going to try the galaxy underneath it called the Triangulum Galaxy. It's a bit smaller, but it's still a large galaxy. Okay, go to trekking. Now, I'm going to leave it another 30 seconds or so because it, it can sometimes recenter itself. So I'll just let it do its thing a bit longer. No, I think we must be there. Next thing to do is go to the More tab. You can stretch the histogram, and that actually works now. It didn't on the previous firmware, but when I start stacking, this will actually have an effect on how the image looks. You can stretch individual color channels or all the color channels together to bring out more detail in different dark bits or light bits of the image, depending on where you're stretching dark there and light there. Okay, so here we've got TIFF format, which is RAW format. I think we're still, that's the only option. The count, with two times two binning, I think that's the only option for that at the moment. We're on stack, so it's going to do a stacked image. And if we click on count, go to, I don't know, let's try 50. Confirm. So it's going to do 50 exposures. I need to set an exposure. I'll make sure the IR passes on and the time I think will go for about five seconds. <clears throat> there we go. So it's a compromise between the stars trailing and getting signal in. And let's give that a go. It'd be good if I could actually see the object. Uh, let's try. I just want to let me try 15 just to see if I can bring actually see a sign of the object because what I don't want to do is spend a while stacking and then for there to be nothing there because I can't see a trace of the galaxy at the moment. Oh, there we go. Okay, is it there anywhere? Now, I think we would see that if it was there. The Triangle and Galaxy is fairly bright. But that, anyway, that's the kind of tracking you get on a 15 second exposure, so it's best to keep it down at about five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick a brighter object. Let's go to M42, the Orion Nebula, and we'll, we'll try that instead. So I'm, I just want to check that the go-to is working okay by going to a very bright object. Features, go-to. It's the next one on the list. Great Orion Nebula. Let's go to it. We'll soon know whether the go-to's 
functioning as it should because you shouldn't miss the core of Orion that's going to show up on very short exposures okay there we go bang in the middle that is awesome isn't it look at that tell you what it'd be a shame not to do that wouldn't it let's do the Orion let's go for it so I can five second exposures I'll pass on gain 100 let's go for yeah should we try should we try four seconds try and keep the stars nice and round so we can basically play about with it now and just see what the limit is before the stars go too too stretchy with tracking errors so I'll try six seconds As this is electronic aided astronomy, I'm not too worried about star shapes. So I think six seconds is fine. And what we'll do is we'll go back onto features more and we'll, we want to count of 50. I think that's fine. And we'll, we'll do it. Let's go for it, hit the button. and stretch the image a bit. It's very red at the moment, so let's get the red channel. Just pull that down a bit. A bit too much. Get the blue channel, stretch that up a lot, a little bit. And the same with the green. I think that'll do go on the all of them I've kind of blown out the core a bit there and we can just manipulate that curve basically while it's stacking which is cool and that curve wasn't working before the firmware update looks like my greens a little bit low so let's stretch that up a bit what's that looking like now that needs to go a bit more maybe mm. A little bit too green, isn't it? There we go. I'll let that do its thing. The, the app is a lot slicker since I've uh, updated the firmware, but it still gets rid of the image as soon as it's finished stacking. Like you want that there to look at and mess about with, but it should be in the album now as a thumbnail, which was my complaint on the last video is it wasn't clear where it was I could see some blank tabs but I didn't know what they were but I can now see that we've got a image saved of the Great Orion Nebula so here is that very image saved as a PNG you can as said you can only select TIFF but what it does it saves a thumbnail to PNG and also your raw files to TIFF that you can find on the micro SD card so all I've done with this image since coming out of the the uh, Dwarf 2 is I've just balanced the colour a little bit and done a bit of noise removal but that's pretty much, this is pretty much what you can see on the screen which my GoPro doesn't show quite so well so I thought I'd show you an accurate representation of what you can see on screen. So here we have the process TIFFs, um, I put them in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, for some reason it only lets you have the monochrome um, files, um, there's no colour. The software I'm using, Deep Sky Stacker, it's a very popular astronomy software for stacking. So if um, I don't know what the issue is, but I can't get colour out of them. But you, as you can see, there is a lot more detail that you can pull out of the raw files. Um, you can see a lot more of the nebula extending out and the running man at the top. Okay, got Andromeda in the middle again. Let's have a look at it. What exposure shall we pick? Let's try five seconds for a compromise between the trailing stars and detail in the galaxy. Gain, let's try 120. Let's give that a go. Awesome. If we go to more, I'll take 50 shots 
I'm gonna go on stack, confirm, punch it. Again, this is the thumbnail PNG that gets saved in the album. Um, easy for you to sort of share with your friends. And I just wanna give, again, a representation of what you can see on screen. I don't think I've quite done this one justice because uh, you can usually see the satellite galaxy M110 quite clearly and it's not so visible on this uh, image. And here are the processed TIFFs. Again, stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and processed in GIMP with levels and curves, bit of noise reduction. And here are the results when I revisited the Triangle and Galaxy M33. Uh, the second time round, I, I could see it on the screen and this is the, uh, the TIFFs that have been stacked and processed to bring out as much detail as possible. A more challenging target than Orion and Andromeda because it's not as bright from a bottle six skies. I think with this device you'd probably get better results with the fainter objects traveling out to very dark skies. But from your, your garden in suburbia, I think you are going to be limited to the, the brighter showpiece uh, objects, which is going to be good to sort of like show people a bit of insight into um, astronomy, I think. I mean, it, it is relatively simple to use and very compact. So I think it's uh, compelling, but you've got to keep the reins on what this can realistically achieve in terms of astrophotography and electronic aided astronomy. I think I saw on the Dwarf Lab site they've posted something about it compares to a $1,500 star tracker and DSLR with lens. Now, I would not agree with that i don't think that's a fair comparison you'd be able to get much better images out of the star tracker and the camera and the lens with a much bigger sensor and um but this has the benefit that i mean that was a star tracker this has got plate solving so this makes finding objects a, a lot easier for you as long as you clear any obstructions from your garden point the lens high enough up to clear the obstructions and set a reasonable exposure you can focus on stars and very pain painlessly most times plate solve and go to it's just going to be limited even with the uhc filter from light polluted skies it's just those brighter objects that kind of show up a bit more nicely so it's i think this has got its place um but i don't think i don't think it's fair to say it competes with a, a full-on imaging rig just yet maybe maybe the dwarf free who knows but yeah certainly very compelling as a gadget that does quite a few different areas because it can also do the the daytime nature tracking and um, panoramas stitching together and um, i'm quite looking forward to giving solar a go with it although we are in the depths of winter so the sun's not really that apparent at the moment i can't quite remember the last time i saw it in fact and just to make you aware the images we've got here have been cropped a little bit just to frame the object a bit better and so they don't appear quite so small for comparison here are the uncropped images Combining the 100mm telephoto lens with the 1.45 micron pixels of the Sony IMX415 sensor gives you resolution of 3 arc seconds per pixel, which is mildly undersampling, but very sensible when you consider the tracking ability of the mount, because if you're undersampling it's both more sensitive to the light and with lower arc second resolution, the photons are less likely to be smeared across the sensor into different photo sites. So, yep, I've got to commend them all now. They've miniaturized everything down. I think that's really commendable and it's a very small portable device that I'm sure definitely fills the market. It is good for what it is. One of those good things is that I think the sensor seems quite well matched to the optics because I've not noticed any vignetting when stretching or very little vignetting compared to other things I've rigged up personally. When you stretch the image, it only darkens right in the corners, not sort of like the very centre, like some things. So yeah, um, it's fairly, fairly quite a flat uniform illumination really to play with, but it is a very small sensor. So I guess there you have it. Okay, all that remains is to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a special thank you to my channel members as always, Dan the Man and the Four Grapples. And if you want to learn more about the Dwarf too, you can visit them at dwarflab.com. Otherwise, you can check out my unboxing and initial thoughts video right here.